We feel that we have exhausted all prudent measures and have been ignored. And it has been left to us to decide whether we allow these things to go on or whether we make a stand so they will not happen to other people across this country. Oregon militia leader Ammon Bundy talking to reporters after rancher Dwight Hammond Jr. reported to jail today along with his son for an Austin sentence for which they'd already served some time. Uh, Hammond and his son were convicted and jailed in 2012 for setting fires that spread to public land, but a judge ruled they didn't serve enough time and must report back to jail. Protests have escalated since, and a group of militiamen now occupy a national wildlife refuge in support for both the Hammonds. With tension rising, what will we see? A sagebrush rebellion or more ominously another Waco? Let's talk about it with two gentlemen who have definite opinions on the subject. Skyping in from Indianapolis, former White House spokesman for President George W. Bush, Pete Seat. Pete now senior project manager at Hathaway Strategies. And Skyping in from our nation's capital, former advisor to Senator Harry Reid, Ari Rabenhoft. Ari is now the host of The Agenda on Sirius XM Radio's Progressive Channel. Uh, gentlemen, we appreciate your time. And I got to tell you, as a guy who represented the rural West, there has been a lot of frustration building. BLM officials coming in telling some of my constituents, hey, as far as you're concerned, I'm God. And this high-handed attitude has gotten in the way. Now, that's no excuse to get violent. But, you know, Ari, it's very interesting. A couple of years ago, there was Nancy Pelosi offering a benediction, as it were, to the Occupy Wall Streeters saying God bless them. Don't the folks uh, in rural areas, uh, don't they have a point here? Look, if, they're, if, if you're talking about their Saturday protest before they went armed and took over a federal building, if you were talking about nonviolent civil disobedience, right, I might not agree with their point, right? When they stood at the courthouse steps in, uh, in Oregon and started throwing pennies at the steps in protest, I'm, I might not agree with their point, but I'm, I'm good with them. They should, that's, that's a protest. They, should be, they are constitutionally permitted to express their grievances in that way. Where I run into a, and if they had actually gone and decided they were sitting in at that facility, fine. But when they go to that facility and they brandish weapons and they say that if a federal agent comes to get them out, they're going to, that agent's life is at risk. When they're making threats like that, that's where the line is crossed. I think there is, there is legitimate protest, and there should be legitimate protest on the right and left in this country, and legitimate protests are protests. They are not taking over places when you're armed and threatening those from the, uh, threatening government authorities who would come with you with violence. Let's get Pete Seat's take on this situation, Pete. Well, first off, you're absolutely right, J.D., that there has been growing frustration in the West, in Arizona, in Nevada, and other states where upwards of 60, 70, 80 percent of land in some states is owned by the federal government. But this particular situation is utter madness. If you had asked me 24 hours ago which presidential candidate was most likely to take up arms, truck it to Oregon, and stand with these individuals, I would have said Ted Cruz. And yet today, Ted Cruz comes out and tells them to stand down. Not even Ted Cruz agrees with their way of highlighting their grievances with the government rather than going through the process that is set forward in the Constitution and the laws of this country. Gentleman Dwight Hammond spoke to reporters before turning himself in, and he, uh, it's interesting to hear what he had to say. Let's listen to it together now. It's not about me. It's about America. And somehow we got to get the wheels back on this wagon because they're flying off. Well, I think a lot of people would agree with that concern on both the left and the right, perhaps for different reasons, Ari. But in the minute that we have left, 30 seconds to you in terms of politics in the here and now. We hear the president wants to take executive action on gun control. Will this inure to his political benefit and the benefit of the left? Uh, I would have thought so, but frankly, you're seeing even Republicans like, as Pete pointed out, Ted Cruz, behave eminently responsibly, and I never thought I'd utter that sentence. And I think they're doing that because they recognize that the actions of these people aren't popular and aren't within uh, our political framework. 
Final word to you, Pete Seed. Isn't it nice to hear that Ari actually says Republicans can be responsible? I'm, I'm going to capture that moment and save it for posterity. But I think President Obama is going to try to use this episode in the coming days in unveiling his gun control proposals. He's going to take every advantage to use this for his political gain. All right, gentlemen, we thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Ari Ravenhoft in Washington and Pete Seat in Indianapolis. Now, coming up, uh, we'd like your comments. Send them to me at NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. And more on President Obama's move toward gun control. Executive action. Is this just cleverness trying to skirt the Constitution? We'll talk about it with Alan Dershowitz as Newsmax Prime continues. <laughs>